As you know, I'm Kyington, the Tech Pro, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a REST API in Visual Studio step-by-step -step with no step skips, and it's going to be really easy. I've made it as a beginner tutorial. So you simply need to download and install Visual Studio 2017 or 2019 or any version, and you're able to follow along in this tutorial. Again, as I used to do when I make a video, I also do the step-by-step -step, as well as all the, all the code snippets you need right here in my website so that when you miss out anything, you can find it right here. So if you go to Google and type Kind on the Genius, and then you go to my website, if, you, if it opens up my website page, you simply go down to, to what I wrote recently. You see, I wrote recently right here, and you just click on it, and so you can see what we are going to be doing right now is this tutorial here. We are going to be following the steps right here. So let's go ahead to get started. With this REST API, we are able to select a list of items, a list of names, and also be able to insert, we are able to update, and we are able to delete. And in the nice part, we are now going to use MS SQL Server, and also this is going to be really very easy as well. And later, we are now going to do MVC, where we are going to generate the HTML page for this API. The first thing I'm going to do now is go to File in Visual Studio and say New and say File New Project. Okay, so I think I can use my keyboard. So File New Project. Again, Visual Studio is free for the Community Edition, so feel free to go download it and install. So once it comes to this window, simply click on .NET ASP.NET Core Web Application. I'm going to call it Give it a name here. I'm going to call it API Tutorial. That's the name. And I'm going next. I'm, get, I'm clicking on OK. And now this next window that comes out is very important. You need to actually select API. So if you select empty, it's OK. But it's going to be difficult when you select empty because you have to write all the bits and pieces of the codes yourself. So when we select API and leave every other thing here at default and say OK. The interesting thing that happens is that it's going to scaffold and generate all the code placeholders you need. And so what you need to do is really uh, a very basic, like filling up some empty spaces. And the first thing we want to do is to set up the project, which is what we've done right now, as you can see. And the first thing, we, the next thing we are going to do is to create the model. So the model is like the object we are going to be working with, and I call it friend. So we want to have a list of friends that is returned. So let's get back here. But one thing you can do once this project is set up like this is simply to run it to just see what happens. To see that it's really so interesting that it already set up uh, the API, and you can you can actually assess a route and get it, uh, some items as JSON. So I've clicked on run and let's see what happens. So what's going to happen is going to launch the, uh, the IIS server and uh, open your browser and go uh, navigate to this route slash API slash values and we have value 1, value 2. Now this value 1 and value 2 is coming from the values controller right here. So this values controller, let me just stop this application from running, it, it contains slash uh, the route slash API slash values and then we have this HTTP gets returns string of items values one, uh, a string list of values one and value two. All right, that's fine. So eventually we are going to create another controller, but first let's create the model that is the object of the class that's going to define the object we're going to be storing. So I'm going to create, sorry, give me one second. So the first thing I want to do is to create a folder that's going to hold the model. So I'm going to go to add and choose new folder. I'm going to call it folder models. And inside it, I'm going to create the model. I, I'm calling it friend. So go to class, new, that's new class. And I'm going to call it friends and the reason is because I want to have a list of friends returned we are able to should be able to insert update delete and, and view 
All right, so we have the model. The French will have a first name, last name, location, and date of hire. Now, I already have this in my website, so I'm going to simply copy these properties from here and um, paste, and then I'm going to show you how to generate a constructor. So, a second. So, I'm going to paste. Sometimes private and public might be a problem, but let's leave it for now. And later I'm going to show you why it may have to be public. So I'm going to right click. If you right click, you see quick actions and refactoring and click on it and choose generate constructor. The first one I'm going to generate all like all acts constructor that a constructor that takes all the arguments. But just a minute. I will like to add an ID, so I'm going to say private. Uh, sorry, a second. Send this one down. Okay. So I'm going to say private. Uh, private in ID get set, and that's fine. I'm going down and I'm going to right click, quick actions and refactoring, go to constructor and all acts constructor, that's fine, you can see it's created. I also like to add a second constructor, this time it's no acts constructor, so I'm going to click on constructor and deselect everything and say OK, all right? And this is fine. So we've created our model. The next thing we want to do now is create the controller that's going to handle this frames model. So I'm going to go to the controller and right click and say add controller. Now pay attention to this screen because we're going to be using it in subsequent tutorials. So what you are going to choose is API controller with read write actions. So basically it's going to generate the placeholder codes for insert, update and delete. That's why we have read write actions. If you choose API controller empty, you then you have to write all the codes by hand, that is by yourself. I normally like using the, the read write action because it makes life easier, you know. So I'm going to say add. Now, so it's going to generate, uh, yeah, so I'm going to say frame. Normally, the name of the controller by convention have to be prefixed, the name of the model, and the suffix to be controller. So I'm going to add. So the first part, because uh, the steps I'm following is right here on my website, but since I know them, so I'm just uh, going through them. So the first thing we want to do is to create an array list of friends. So it's going to be, um, let me just see if I can uh, see. Let's just wait for a second. All right, so this is where we are, and I'm going to come here and say um, public, uh, sorry, list of friends, list of friends, friends, equal to new list of friends. Now, I've created this list, but I want to in initialize it as well at the same time, so I'm going to just open curly braces right here. Close. Okay, so this is where we are, and let me just release. Okay, this is fine. Yeah, so list frames, frames, they bought a new list of frames. I think that should be fine. Okay, so uh, we need to add some items. So let's see. Yeah, first let's close this up. Um, yeah, so so let's now add some items. So I'm going to say new friend. Um, specify ID. Um, ID name Python. And location is uh, Budapest. And date of hire is equal to date time. 
dot today. All right. All right, so this is what we have, but we have error message. So let me see where it's coming from. Um, first, we're gonna take out this. Oh, sorry. So list friend friends they fall to. Okay, so this is what we have. Okay. So I'm going to add more friends. I think I can copy now from my website. So let me copy the second one. Should be this one. So let me just put the comma and B to paste. All right, so you can repeat the same thing. Uh, yeah, so in this case, I need to add two. So I can just add a couple more. Copy from here and paste, paste. All right, this is fine. Okay, so let me change the index to three and this one to four. Okay, so at this point, we have a list of friends. How do we return it? So in the get method, I'm going to simply say return friends right here like this is a typo friends oh uh, yeah so let's see let's see friends friends ah so i need to change this font to list of friends as well so the font type is going to be list of friends all right so this is what we have right now the get method returns a list of friends, so let's save and then we are going to run it and see if it works. So I'm going to click on run so that if it works, that will be great. So we now talk about how to insert and how to update and delete. I recommend that you follow this tutorial because actually building an application in .NET kind of is very interesting because everything is in the same uh, ecosystem, Microsoft SQL Server, Microsoft .NET Framework, everything is more or less Microsoft. So I'm going to go to Friends. Okay, so we have an empty array coming back. So what I'm going to do now, now remember I talked about the private and public modifier. So if I go back to the model, I'm going to change the modifiers for these properties from private to public like this and I'm going to copy it across so I'm going to copy across okay so now this should be fine so I'm going to save everything and I'm going to rerun it again so without this public modifier uh, you find out that you'll not be able to have any re results because the the yeah so let's see okay so i'm going to go back to the same endpoint to the same route so i'm going to say friends like this and now you can see that it returns a list of friends so if, you, if you've come this far thumbs up to you you've really done so well and the next part now because i'm running out of time i don't want this video to be too long I'm going to now show you how to do insert, that is post, HTTP post, put and delete. Actually, the steps are right here in my website. So you can play around uh, with the steps in my website and then in the next part, in part two, we now see how to do it. Uh, remember, I'm kind to the tech pro. If you have challenges, please do let me know and uh, keep in mind that I'm always there for you.